Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided to do a palette bingo with all of the collab palettes that I own. I only own four. It's not like a crazy amount of palettes. I usually choose five shadows for my bingos and today I used four and then I allowed myself to choose one more shade from within these four to just finish off the look. So if you want to see what I did, don't go anywhere. These collaborations are between Michaela, I Love Sorahi, Rob Beauty Christie, and Angela Kniekvist and it was just a lot of fun to do another bingo. It's been a while since I did a bingo video. Down in the description box I will link an entire bingo playlist that I have. If you have never been here before, hello. My name is Rachel. I am a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I love to play with colorful eyeshadow. I upload several videos every week. It's always an all eyeshadow related content. So if you want to see lots more of this sort of thing, then don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Now let's get going because bingos are so much fun. Okay, so I will be honest, I already pulled the numbers, but I haven't actually looked at the, at the shades. I just know, okay, this palette had 30 shades in it and I pulled, I think, number 11? No, number 8. I pulled number 8 in the Michaela palette, but I didn't look at what shade number 8 was. So this part of the process is still a discovery for me as far as what shadow colors I'm actually working with. The reason I did it this way is because I record my videos with my phone and sometimes it, it's like, okay, I'll pull the numbers from a bowl and sometimes I'll do it on my computer while I'm recording and it's just a little cumbersome. So I did it ahead of time and now we're going to look and see what I got. So I have four collaboration palettes here. I have the Michaela palette between Glamlay and Michaela. I have the Hella palette between, they're all upside down. I have the Hella palette <laughs> between Angelica Nyquist and Udenzai. I've got the At Forest Sight palette between Rob Beauty Christie and ColourPop. And then I have the Through My Eyes palette between I Love Sarahi and ColourPop. And those are the palettes in order as far as which numbers I pulled. So I'm gonna put up on the screen, the screen recording of me generating the numbers as I figure out which ones they are in the palette and swatch them and see what we have to work with. So. I'm going to start with the Michaela palette, which had 30 shades in it, and the number that I pulled was number 8. So let's see. This is 6, 7, 8. The shade Simba. So this is a peachy coral kind of tone. And honestly, I have not used this one very much. Let me swatch on my hand here. So this is the shade Simba from um, the Michaela palette, and that is a really pretty color. The reason that I thought today's would be good for doing this uh, collaboration bingo was because of the shirt that I'm wearing. It's kind of neutral with like orangey, brownish, yellowy, greeny sorts of tones. And I thought, well, a lot of my collab palettes have those kinds of colors. So I thought maybe I would get lucky and get something that worked with my outfit. <laughs> but we'll see. You never know. Okay, the next one that I pulled was from the Hella palette. And I generated the number, what, did it, what was it? Number 15. So within Hella, We've got 16 shades, 4 times 4 is 16, and this is number 15 right here, the, the shade called Soot. I'm actually really glad I got this shade because it's a good deepening shade. I mean, it's obviously the deepest shade in the palette, right? But this is a great deepening shade. It's a beautiful, um, super deep purple black kind of color. It's very pretty. So this is the shade Soot from Hella, number 15. Then I generated from the At Far Sight palette between ColourPop and Rob Beauty Christie, and I got the shade uh, number seven. So this is eight, this is seven. Another dark one. This is the color Homegrown, and it is a dark brown purple color. It's like a deep mahogany shade. I was having far too much trouble explaining that to you. It's a deep mahogany shade. The third one, third one right here. Number seven called Homegrown. I'm a little less excited about that shadow because um, now I've got two quite dark shades, but it's still within the color, you know, the theming that I thought I might get. So finally, within the Through My Eyes palette, um, I pulled the shade number 11. So 8, 12, this is, oh my goodness. Okay, this, <laughs> this is going to be a really dark look. Wow. This is the shade Divina. Is that right? 8, 12, 4, 8, 12, 11. Yes. Okay. This is the shade Divina. This is a super dark purple. This is very similar to the um, the Hella shade that I pulled, Soot. But this one's more of a deep berry undertone. It's got a little bit less black. Wow, this is going to be a really dark look. Okay, and so those are the four collab palettes that I own. Now, I usually do five colors with the palette bingo, so I am allowing myself to choose one color from any of the palettes to finish off the look. 
Oftentimes when I do five colors in a bingo, I allow myself to choose one additional color if I feel like the look just needs something to finish it, whether it's an inner corner highlight or a shimmer or something. And the reason I do that is because I wear this look the entire day and I want to like it. So I give myself a little bit of flexibility. And in this case, because I've only got four palettes to work with, I'm gonna choose one color to play with um, you know, add into the mix and uh, we're gonna get going. I have already primed my eyes using the Glam Light Icing Primer in the shade White Frosting, so I'm gonna go off camera for a second and figure out what I'm gonna do with this because there are like three of basically the same color, right? <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So I have a plan now. I'm gonna start in the shade Homegrown from the At Forest Sight palette. Did I mention I've already primed my eyes? I think I did. I'm placing Homegrown in the outer corner and through the crease a bit. And this is going to be my transition color. Then I'm going to deepen it. And I decided to bring in a shimmer. And I did narrow it down to a shimmer from either the Hella palette or the Michaela palette. But I haven't quite decided which direction I want to go. Within the Hella palette, I thought I might take that yellowy green shimmer called Golden Bridge. Honestly, I think that one might be slightly higher on, in the list of contenders. The other shimmer I was looking at was... Um, the one called Accent from the Michaela palette, and that is a little bit more along the lines of the other colors I've pulled. And that's why it's lower in the list of what I think I'll do because it's, I, I don't generally enjoy monochromatic looks. I find them a bit unexciting. And so if I'm gonna go out on a limb and choose any color I want to finish off a look, I might just go with something a bit brighter or at least more exciting. I thought I might talk with you guys about the new Udenzai Christmas release because it's on my mind. Today, the day that I'm filming is the day that it launches and I am hoping to be lucky enough to grab a palette. I kind of assume that they're gonna sell out right away, but I don't know, maybe they have a huge amount of inventory and it'll be fine. I don't know, I assume that they'll sell out and then restock. I'm hoping to get one of their palettes right away and then we'll go from there. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the palettes because they are so beautiful. I mean, everyone is talking about these palettes because they're so on the nose as far as Christmas packaging, right? It's like Udenzai decided to do a Christmas themed release and they went all out. And when Udenzai goes all out, you know it's gonna be good because their color stories are fabulous. Their packaging is out of this world. The quality, amazing. It's just, you, you just know it's gonna be good. The videos that I've seen from influencers who got these palettes ahead of time everything is so beautiful and i think i finally decided that i'm just gonna try to get one of them right now there's a chance that if i'm able to get the one that i want more and that was a hard decision i may decide to get the second one if it's still available with a black friday discount i don't know if it will be it's a holiday themed release so i am guessing that there will be enough for people to buy them all the way towards the holidays, but maybe not. But Udenzai, I've never had a problem with them, and I feel that they usually have enough. Like, even if they do need to restock, they bring in enough for most people to get them. They really want them, and they have the resources to buy them when they're available. Of course, there's the there's the, uh, the urgency to get it before it sells out, right? And that's how they make their money. <laughs> Anyway, they're beautiful palettes. The one that I have decided I like a little bit more is the Merry Christmas palette, which is the warmer toned one in red packaging. And the reason I opted for that one over the Christmas Eve palette, which is much more cool toned and in blue packaging, and you'd think that I would go for cool tone because I have cool undertones to my skin. Um, but I think that I can get kind of close. I'm not saying dupe, not at all but I think that I can get kind of close to like two thirds of the colors in the Christmas Eve palette with other shadows in my collection and specifically with some Uden's eyeshadows. That palette is more cool toned, some blues and purples. It's also got some grungier greens in it. So the grungy greens, I think I could get close with the Hella palette, close. I'm uh, now gonna grab, oh, speaking of, I'm gonna grab Hella and take the shade Soot. I'm putting Soot on a pencil brush and I'm gonna deepen the outer corner now. I think that I could get some of those more grungy, yellowy, greeny tones with the Hella palette, at least close-ish. 
in the same formula, right? So there's that. And then I think that I could get some of those blue purple tones using the Budenzai Sol Monoi 2 eyeshadow palette, which I also have. And then I'm pretty sure that a couple of the other shades in the Christmas Eve palette could probably be, you know, found something that would work within the other palettes in my collection. So that's the, the reason that I'm a little bit less tempted by that palette, even though I do actually slightly prefer the blue packaging over the red. I just prefer the color scheme a little bit more. But when it comes to the shadows inside, which is really the part that matters, I mean, for an eyeshadow palette, the shadows inside, I think, are a little bit less unique in my collection. And in the Christmas or the Merry Christmas palette, those shadows are more unique to my collection. I mean, obviously it's a unique color story within one package, but the shadows themselves, the colors, like the tones of reds and greens and golds, I just think that one's a little bit more interesting. And when I've seen people use it, it looks really special. And then there's the multi-chrome in that, both palettes have a multi-chrome, but the multi-chrome in the Christmas Eve palette is a dark, uh, I think it's a dark blue purple sort of color. And if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know I tend to not use dark shimmers and I tend not to use dark blues and dark purples. So even though it is a beautiful shade, I, I don't know how much use it would get in my collection. Now, I watched Danielle Kanikvist's video, of course, and she used that one and she looked amazing. But she has yellow undertones in her skin, so she looks amazing in literally every shade of blue there is, all of them. Whereas I have to be a bit more selective about the blues that I use. And the multi-chrome in the Merry Christmas palette is more of a light limey green with a pink shift and some gold. And I know that that one would get a lot more use. So. All in all, I would prefer to get the Merry Christmas palette if I'm able to get either one. Halfway preparing myself that, yeah, you know, you might not get it today and it's okay. It's, first off, it's just an eyeshadow palette. It's okay. In a couple hours, the launch goes live. So I'm going to hope to get Merry Christmas today. And if I'm able to, and if they still have stock um, around Black Friday, I may try to get the Christmas Eve. That's my plan. Okay, so I've used two of my four colors. Now I want to dip into the shade Simba from the Michaela palette. Where is my brush? Where is my brush? Here's my brush. I'm going to take a, a small blending brush. It's not super small. And I'm going to run Simba on the inner corner and the lower lash line. I'm, I don't usually do this step first, but I'm doing it right now because I know what I want the lower lash line to look like. I'm going to use this peachy tone to decide which shimmer to go for and how it might play off. So this is just the inner corner highlight and I'm going to grab this shade Divina from Through My Eyes and I'm going to use that to deepen my outer corner in the lower lash line. I was surprised when I pulled these numbers and found out what shades they were because I really did not expect the look to have this many dark tones. I expected it to be more on the neutral side with maybe a pop of color from Michaela but I wasn't expecting to get the darkest shade in two of the palettes and those shades being so similar. Divina and Soot are very similar. All right, so here's what I'm considering for my shimmer. This is the shade Accent from the Michaela palette. And then this is the shade Golden Bridge from the Hella palette. So which one, oh, I need a bigger mirror. Which one do I wanna play with today? Accent, of course, would be a lot more you know, aligned with the neutral look of the of the look, look of the look. That was genius. That was a great sentence. <sighs> Accent, of course, would be more in line with the neutral feeling of the look. Whereas this shade here, Golden Bridge, would bring in something a bit more interesting. I really don't know. I, honestly, I'm a little bit more drawn to this shade here, which surprises me because I figured for sure I'd want to go for something more green. I don't know, but I can pull any color I want. Maybe I should give myself another choice. Anything from these four palettes. Like maybe more of a sagey yellowy green, but oh man, if we're looking at the palette itself, the golden bridge tone is kind of a yellowy green. Maybe though it's too, too um, limey. I'm kind of envisioning more of a brown based 
neutral sage green shimmer. I think I'm gonna go with accent, which really surprises me because I thought for sure I'm gonna want more, you know, a, a more vivid, bright color, but I think I'm gonna go with accent. I changed my mind again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I feel like, first of all, I don't think I've ever used that accent shade. It's so pretty, but it's not, it's too safe. It's not exciting to me. So what I've decided to do is go into Golden Bridge. However, I'm not going to use it wet. First, I'm going to put it on dry because that might make a difference. I always spray my shimmers, right? But spraying them makes them more metallic. It also helps control fallout and whatnot, but spraying them makes them more metallic. And so I thought, well, if I don't spray it and I just put it on dry, it might go a little bit softer, a little bit of a duller shine and color. And that might be a bit towards the sagey green that I was thinking about or think, thinking of. So this is the shade Golden Bridge, obviously. And I'm not packing it on. I'm kind of going in lightly. Like I loaded my brush a little bit and I started in the inner corner where I want it to be the brightest. And now, still dry, I'm just dragging it over to meet the mattes. Because it gives me the contrast. I love contrast. I think if I had put on the accent shade, I would have been like, oh, this is pretty. And that would have been it. Just not exciting. Doesn't get me going, oh, that's cool, you know? It doesn't give me the reaction that I want. And I kept questioning myself. Like, yes, it's my gut instinct to go for the safer choice, but... The whole point of this is to stretch myself a little bit and be creative and try new things. So here we are, <laughs> me being flaky, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I do like this. So this is, putting it on dry is certainly making it a little bit less vibrant. And that's always an option. I don't usually consider it because I usually want my shimmers to be really stand out, but I wanted a softer brown green tone. And putting this shade on dry gives me that. But I do like that green. That green is more of a sagey brown since I've spread it out so I've I really diffused it over the lid instead of highly concentrated and I think that works. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to do this peachy liner from Colourpop. What's it called? I don't remember what it's called because it's all worn off. But it's a peachy creme gel liner. I thought I would accentuate the peach pink tones on the lower lash line since they're there. I don't want them to get lost. Yeah, that works. Okay, I'm gonna go off camera and finish this look up and then I'll be right back to show you how it turned out. All right guys, here's the finished look. This is how it all turned out. I did a winged eyeliner and it was disastrous. So then I went back into the Davina shade with uh, the same flat brush that I'd used under the eye in the lower lash line. And I sort of just tried to salvage. I just sort of smoked out what I had done with the wing. It was awful, it was so bad. So my my outer corners might look a little bit untidy now, but it's better than a really terrible wing. <laughs> um, on my face, I actually did three things. I think it was because the eye look was sort of neutral with a bit of smoke and that made me kind of set the mood for putting other things on my face. So I put on bronzer. This is the Tulum palette that a uh, subscriber gave me. I used this shade right here. Then I grabbed the shade uh, no Vacancy from Colourpop's Super Shock Cheek, and I put that on as blush. And then I did a highlighter from Nomad Around the World. This is the shade Positano Sunrise. So, well, I'll show it to you. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. And that's everything for the face. Then I, um, what else did I do? Oh yes, on my lips, I'm wearing a NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Cinnamon Roll. And up until I started buying these NYX Butter Glosses, I pretty much only had Colourpop lip oils in two shades. And the lip oils don't bring a lot of pigment. They bring a hint of pigment. And I love the formula. It's so smooth and hydrating and nice. But if I want a little bit of color, but I don't want to go so far as to have lipstick, then this is actually a comfortable formula as well. Also smooth, feels hydrating. It's not too sticky. That's everything. That is the whole look. I think it turned out quite pretty. I'm really glad that I opted for the Golden Bridge Shimmer over the more... <laughs> okay. Did you hear that little squeak? My little toddler has these rubber duckies all over the house that squeak and our dog just laid on one. <laughs> I'm like, what is, <laughs> oh my word. <sighs> okay, what was I saying? Oh yes, I'm glad I opted for Golden Bridge, but dry because that gave me the brown based 
sagey kind of green that I wanted. It's not really brown based so much, but when I mixed it with the other more neutral tones of the look, then it started to look brown based. I'm glad I went with what I was thinking would work instead of going for what I knew would work. And I love how it turned out. Thank you for being here. I hope you like the look. Remember, I'm uploading lots of videos lately. So subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.